So spring is around the corner, which means spring trends are probably starting to pop up on your social media feeds and I have some thoughts about them. So in today's video, I wanted to share with you the top 10 spring 2024 trends that I won't be buying. I think the key to having authentic personal style that feels like you is taking the things that you like and essentially making it timeless in your own wardrobe. That's when the idea of something being in fashion or being on trend kind of becomes moot because you like it and you're the one who's wearing the shit out of it, regardless of whether or not it's in style. So keep that in mind as you watch this video. And this video is in kind partnership with AG1, but I'll talk about them more a little later on. So as I was doing my research for this video, I pretty much compiled all the most common trends I was seeing, looking at websites like Vogue, Glamour, Refinery29, Who, What, Where, and obviously TikTok. So let's get into it. The first trend I absolutely positively will not be buying are Capri pants. I'm a millennial. I wore them back in the 2010s. It was not good then, and I really don't foresee it being good now. <laughs> and I think capri pants may be a classic. You think things like Audrey Hepburn, I think Sandy from Greece, and I've been seeing them in a lot of really interesting patterns like leopard print and zebra print, other kind of really fun prints, which are also trending right now. And the way we've been seeing the new modern 2024 capri pant is in that sort of classic 50s and I guess even early 2000s style. A very slim fitting pant that hits right below the knee. I'm also seeing them as cut off denim and even in suiting. So there's a lot of new and updated ways that you'll be seeing people wear capris, but uh, for me, it's gonna be a no. I really prefer a longer inseam on pants. And I feel like this new silhouette is really in response to the longer, more loose fitting silhouettes that we've been seeing in things like denim and trousers over the past few years. But I feel like this is the whole point of trends to begin with. As soon as you feel like you suddenly are with it, they change what it is. I used to be with it, but then they changed what it was. Now what I'm with, isn't it? And what's it seems weird and scary to me. It'll happen to you. And with these capri pants, they aren't all hitting at the knee in that classic way that you might think of. Some are hitting below the knee, almost in like an ankle length, which to me is also a callback to 2016, 2017 cropped denim. I feel like we're kind of going back there. So if you have your old jeans or old ankle length trousers from a few years ago, then no need to buy into it if you wanna participate. And I mean, the silver lining to this trend, if you do like it and you do wanna try it, is that it's very DIYable and very thriftable. You can simply go to the thrift store and take a slimmer pair of jeans or a pair of trousers, crop them up, and then you have yourself your very own capri pants. This next one is a trend that I have been starting to see filter into my Instagram feed and my TikTok feed, but when I went to go look it up, officially it's a trend from winter of 2024, but I feel like now it's starting to become a little bit more mainstream on social media, which is why I included it here. And that is neckties. And I think this is inspired from two different angles. One is obviously the great Avril Lavigne, right back to the skater boy era. And the other source of inspiration I'm seeing a lot of is this sort of like office siren aesthetic. So it's like very preppy, kind of reminded me of this look like Giselle from Devil Wears Prada with those tiny little glasses, nice structured and fitted button up shirt. Maybe there's a pencil skirt involved and maybe also taking a lot of inspiration from Annie Hall. So there seems to be a lot of preppy and menswear inspiration coming from this look. And don't get me wrong, it's a very easy trend to buy into. I think it's very affordable. You can simply go to like your dad or your boyfriend's closet and steal his tie. So I think very easy to experiment with if you want to, but for me myself, I did the whole skinny tie thing back in my Avril Lavigne days. I don't need to go back there again. But before we get into the rest of the trends of this video, I'm just, I need a second, I'm really thirsty. And that's where I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video, AG1. Was that slick? Was that smooth? I think it was, I think that was a great way to segue into this. If you've been watching my channel for a while, then you know that I have been a fan of AG1 since I started drinking it back in 2020. And leaving thirst aside, it has truly become an integral part of my daily health routine. 
Since I've started it, I've really noticed a difference in my energy levels. I feel a lot more even keel throughout the day with way less caffeine cravings and energy crashes. And it's just a way for me to make sure I'm getting all the vitamins that I need every day. The AG1 supplement contains 75 vitamins, probiotics, and superfoods, all in one daily serving to help support your focus, energy, gut health, and digestion without the need to take a bunch of different pills or supplements a bunch of times a day. It's also dairy-free, gluten-free, nut-free, and it doesn't contain eggs, sugar, or GMOs. It's just a really easy and tasty way to make sure you're getting everything you need. And if you're interested in getting started yourself to support your daily health routine, you can scan this QR code right here to get five free travel packs and a year's supply of their vitamin D K2 drops with your first purchase. Your support of the brands that I work with supports me so I can keep making these videos. So if you try it out, thank you. And thanks AG1. All right, let's get back into the video. The third one I've been seeing more and more and it is sheer lacy skirts. And this is often paired with more chunky, kind of heavier layers. So it'll be a very sheer lacy feminine skirt with a pair of like booty shorts underneath. So it kind of gives this illusion that you're not really wearing any pants and this kind of like see-through allure to it, see-through but not. And then I've been seeing it paired with a lot more heavy pieces like leather jackets, chunky loafers, and really sleek and interesting sunglasses. So it is definitely a look. And I think when done well, I've seen it look really interesting. I've seen these skirts go from a range of full on showing and revealing the underwear that you're wearing to being almost like a double layer skirt. So the top will be very solid and give you a little bit more coverage. And then into the length of the skirt, it will be much more sheer. So depending on how much skin you're comfortable showing, there's other ways to sort of buy into this trend. For me personally, one, I am not much of a skirt person to begin with, and two, I just need a little bit more coverage than that. I feel like if I were to do this trend, it would pretty much be exclusive to like a bathing suit cover only. <laughs> Which brings me into trend number four, and that is short shorts. So in the past few seasons, we've seen anything from actual underwear being worn as pants, a la Bella Hadid, to boxer shorts being really popular in the summertime. And now the trend seems to be moving into a more tailored, structured kind of suiting short almost. I think it looks great on the models and if you love a short short and wanna show off your legs, I think this is a fun trend to try. And I think this is something again, that's very easily thriftable where you could go get a pair of trousers from the thrift store and tailor them to that hemline. But to me, it's not necessarily anything that screams functional or has a lot of longevity to it. I'm not sure where we're wearing this. Like a lot of times on the runway, I'm seeing it in a full suit. So like full on blazer, Oxford button up and then the short shorts. I don't know what office situation that would work in unless you work somewhere very creatively. So this to me is a very fleeting trend. I think it might be fun to play around with. It doesn't read long-term to me. Trend number five is ice blue or robin's egg blue, pastel blue. I think pastels always circle back into spring trends and it's always just a different color that we're leaning into. The other color that has been popping up quite a lot in things like trench coats, blazers, sweaters, is this buttery yellow, again, a pastel. I think it's a fun color to experiment with and I think it's something that you might already have in your wardrobe. For example, if you have a classic blue button up shirt, but the way we're seeing it incorporated is in things like blazers, trench coats, suiting, dresses. So seeing it in more of your hero pieces rather than as like an accessory or a complimentary color in an outfit. For me personally, I will not be buying into this trend because I have enough of these pieces already. And me personally, I have had my colors done and I am a deep, cool and clear color type. So darker, more saturated tones tend to look better on me. So both of these colors in that pastel level of saturation just wouldn't personally work on me. And if it works for your color palette, I think enjoy, have some fun experimenting with it. I think they're both very pretty colors and I do like the way that they're being styled. But for me personally, it wouldn't really get a lot of wear in my wardrobe. 
The thing about like trending colors that always gets me is that it's obviously going to be different every single season and it's just kind of like another way to make us feel a little out of date. If you're wearing a pistachio green that was last year's color or red that was really really hot in 2023 and early into 2024, now all of a sudden it makes you feel like you're out of date and off of trend. So just wear the colors that you like, wear what you want. Don't even worry about what's trending and what's not, especially when it comes to colors. Trend number six that we've been seeing quite a lot on the runways are pencil skirts. So the maxi length skirt has been really popular for a few years now. The midi skirt popular before that. And just to keep us on our toes, we've changed the silhouette to the pencil skirt. I think this does make sense and is in keeping with other things being trending like animal print and the capri pants that we're seeing. So it definitely makes sense to me. It's really giving like a 50s, 60s vibe in terms of inspiration, even early 90s. So it would only make sense that the new silhouette that everyone's embracing this season is a pencil skirt. This time I'm seeing it in a lot more different textures though. So a lot of leathers, patents, and it's not that like super slim kind of pencil skirt where you can't really walk in it. So I think that is a way that it's being updated and modernized. For me personally, it took a lot for me to even get into a maxi skirt, so I am definitely not going to be leaning into this silhouette anytime soon. Number seven, I wouldn't really call a trend. It's more just leaning into heritage and more preppy aesthetic, I guess kind of rolling off the back of that whole quiet luxury trend we've been seeing over the past few years, and that is specifically polo shirts. And one of the articles I even saw was, sorry tank tops, polo shirts are now trending this season. Like, what, is, what does that even mean? <laughs> but we've been seeing it on things like Loewe, Prada, Ghani, Nanushka, so a lot of brands are doing this whole golf shirt polo aesthetic on the runway. So it's definitely a callback to a more preppy aesthetic, but it's sort of been paired with the other trends that we're seeing like the short shorts or even more baggy silhouettes to sort of juxtapose how prim and proper a polo generally reads. For me personally, I always just feel like I'm gonna go golfing in a polo. Nothing against golfing, I just don't like the vibe. Like I feel like all you really need now is like a visor and like a little golfing glove and you're good to go. But again, similar to a lot of these trends that I've talked about in this video, there's nothing really groundbreaking about any of these. All of this is super classic. It's been around for decades. So I don't really see how it's coded as a trend. And I think it's really more about the styling that can make it interesting rather than the piece itself. And if you want to participate and you're into that polo sort of preppy collared look, I think it's such an easy trend that you can get at the thrift store. The next one is something that I thought was trending last year, but it has come up a few times in my searches for spring 2024 trends, and that is roses. And it's not necessarily rose print things, although we are seeing that on the runway as well, but I'm seeing it a lot more in actual embellishments on the garment itself. So I think last year in 2023, we were seeing roses and florals a lot as things like pins and little chokers people were wearing with a little rosette. Very Carrie Bradshaw inspired in my opinion, but this year I'm seeing a lot of, for example, tops with actual fabric roses on the sleeves and just little embellishments here and there to make an otherwise basic top or dress feel a little bit more ornate and interesting. In my opinion, this is nothing new. I think we all know what Miranda Priestly said about florals for spring, and I have the same sentiments. Florals for spring. Groundbreaking. Number nine is quite interesting to me, and that is the little white dress. We've all heard of the little black dress, but now apparently you need a white one too. This has been shown on the runways in a bunch of different iterations, so I think it's really about just the color and not necessarily the shape and silhouette that is on trend, because I've seen it in lacy dresses, in mini dresses, maxi dresses, slip dresses, really intricate, ornate sculptural dresses. It's just the fact that instead of black, they're white now. And I mean, fine, sure. I like a black dress, I like a white dress. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> and finally, trend number 10 is double waistband pants. So this I've been seeing in a few different ways. One is an actual 
pair of pants with the waistband folded over, so it kind of looks like you just ate too much and you're unbuttoning your pants. Some brands even sell a pair of trousers meant to do that already, like for example, these ones from Tivi. But the other way I've been seeing it is almost like a double layered effect. So for example, it'll be like a pair of denim underneath that almost looks like a corset or a pair of hosiery, and then having a different contrasting looking trouser layered over top. Both of these trends, I don't think anybody really needs to buy into because you can achieve it if you want to through simple layering or simple manipulation of the garment once it's on your body, especially if you wanna do just like a simple fold over of the trousers. I think you might need to add like a little snap or button so that they actually stay, but I think it can be a look and it looks really interesting. This I also don't think I would necessarily buy into because I think you can achieve a similar look with hosiery. So you can get some like lacy or fishnet leggings and style it underneath a lower rise pair of trousers or jeans and I think that would look really interesting. So this is a trend that I don't necessarily think costs money to buy into, but I don't think you need to buy a new pair of pants with this effect built into them. I don't necessarily know if it would have as much longevity that way, and you can achieve it for free through layering. So those are the top 10 spring 2024 trends that I won't be buying this year. One, because I don't like them and they don't necessarily fit my personal style, or because I already have it in my wardrobe and I don't need to buy it. Let me know if there's any trends that you will be participating in this season and the ones that you're not. Leave me a comment down below. Thanks again to AG1 for sponsoring today's video. And if you wanna try them yourself, you can scan this QR code right here to get five free travel packs and a year supply of their vitamin D K2 drops with your first purchase. I'll also leave everything linked down below. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe if you're new here and I'll see you next Sunday. Bye.